Uh, it's time now for the Prep Spotlight presented by Capital Sports Fieldhouse. We're going to be talking Langsburg basketball, and they're coming off a big win. The Woodruff brothers combined for 59 in the Wolfpack's 91-44 to 50, 91, 44 win over Dansville. Uh, Eli led the way with 35, and Xander put up 24. And the man that runs the show, their head coach, Dan Morrill, now in his fourth season as the Langsburg head coach. Capital Sports Field House is the home of hit and pitch and a whole lot more. The 10,000 square foot turf field can be used for all indoor sports training, including football, baseball, basketball, softball, soccer, and many other activities. Hit and pitch has seven indoor batting cages with full pitching tunnel and the state-of-the-art hit tracks training system utilized by MLB organizations. Located in the old Capitol Bowl J.C. Penny block on South Washington in Owasso, Michigan, for more details, call Capital Sports and Hit and Pitch at 989-472-4624 or online at capitalsportsfh.com. All right, we've got the head coach of the Langsburg Wolfpack on the line with us. Again, as I said, Daniel Morrill. And, boy, you're off to a great start, Coach, 10-0. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you won the Shiawassee shootout. Tell us about this year's edition of Wolfpack basketball. Yeah, I mean, a lot of good things going on. We're having a blast. Uh, we've got just a, a ton of talent, uh, but but really hardworking kids. I mean, the talent's been developed. And I, I think every every school nowadays says – you know, these kids have been playing together since they were young kids. Like yeah. that's, that's normal. That's right. typical, but these kids love to play together. Like yeah. they love, I can't keep them out of the gym. Um, if they've got a weekend off they're they're finding a gym and they're playing together. So, and it, actually it's been probably one of the challenges. We've had a kind of a couple of kids with nagging injuries that I, I can't get them healed up because they keep, pounding away like one uh eli one of the woodruff brothers that you spoke of has a, a broken foot from football and oh, no, he, just, he just won't stay off it <laughs> so, but yeah it's kind of that that's kind of a long injury to rehab so it's almost like shut it down for the season or just play through it but yeah so he's been playing through it and he's he's kind of finally coming along it it just took a while it was at first they thought it was turf toe oh. uh, he missed his final football game his senior year uh, with it and then as time went on, it just wasn't healing up. And finally they got an MRI and, and got some specialists involved. And they said, no, you've got a break and um, torn ligaments and bone bruising and all sorts of a mess. And frankly, we were worried he'd miss his senior year of basketball. So uh, we've got a tremendous trainer who's been doing toe yoga and stuff with him. Nice. It's, it's really worked. <laughs> he's, nice. he's gotten better and better and better over time. And he has to tape it a certain way. Um, yeah. And I've limited his minutes all year, but as you you heard the other night, I we kind of let, let him loose, him, let him loose a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and obviously you guys are having a great year, him included. And I wanted to ask about Ted mentioned the Shiawassee shootout, the thing that you guys won over our alma mater, Corona. Um, yeah, in my my playing days, I played in like the early two thousands, and there wasn't anything like that back back when I was playing. And we've talked about it, whether it be with with football basketball, any of the the high school sports um, in our area, just how cool it is to have stuff like that, where you play some neighboring cities, whether it's Corona and Owasso or, you know, Perry, Lanesburg, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, because you, you all see each other, you, you live, you go to the same stores, you know, you see each other when you're out in the town or, you know, whatever you want to say. And I just think that's really cool. I wish we would have had something like that, I guess is what I'm saying, the Shiawassee shootout when I was playing do you feel the same way? Do you think something like that is really cool for the kids or is it just uh, another couple games to play? Yeah, look, almost necessary, to be honest with you, because we, we hadn't done it previously. I think the MHSAA made a good decision by saying, let's shrink everything a week and let's mm -hmm. add two games. Yeah, there was just so much dead time in the season and yeah. um, not that. Teenage boys aren't the most attentive group of individuals, but <laughs> you, you can only go through so many weeks of not having a game anywhere near, you know, in, in sight before they, they lose interest a little bit and you've got to get super creative. So for us, um, you know, we were searching for a few games like everybody was, but a few extra because we lost a league school and uh, I really wanted to get into a holiday tournament. I think they become increasingly popular before the addition of the two games. And just to have one local against good competition was, I mean, it was an easy decision. Yeah. So we had a blast. Yeah. 
Lanesburg uh, has always been, in my opinion, you know, a great measuring stick uh, of a good program. I mean, you guys have always been steady uh, going back, you know, the Greg Mitchell days. I know you played under him. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why is that there there seems to never be any drop off from year to year from coach to coach? Seems like Lanesburg is always, you know, right around 15 wins, maybe better. Why is that? Yeah, well, I'd, you mentioned it, uh, Greg Mitchell. So I, I was uh, young in high school when he hit the scene and – you know, these are the days where you know, our weight room was a closet. You kind of had to pull the bench out into the lobby of the, <laughs> and that's how you worked out. Or that's how you thought you were working out. And yeah, and he he changed the culture. And and so this was back 1989, and uh, it, it took a while, of course, but it, it was the building of a youth program. It was the building of a community's belief in the youth program. And now uh, you guys know the old saying, I probably Jim Harbaugh, I think that said it the other day or like a couple months ago about Ryan day, like the born on third thinks he had yeah, a triple. Right, yeah. yep. Like I didn't hit a triple, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I was born on third for this program. And I know that. So it, it's, it's a plug and play system. And, and essentially um, I, I, I don't want to downplay my role in it, but I, to, to be very honest and, and, and humble, uh, I think there's a lot of really good coaches around and anybody that stepped into this role that just wanted, was willing to put in the work and pay things forward would have success. Well, you know, you talked about Greg Mitchell and you're right. I mean, the guy, uh, he's just a fantastic coach. He proved it at Langsburg and now at Hope, yeah. uh, but he set the stage and he built the program, but coaches like yourself have kept it going on. And, you know, we've talked about it here on the podcast before how important it is if a team's like starting at the bottom and we got a couple teams in our area are at the bottom, right? You got to get the right guy in there that is going to put the time and effort in, knows what they're doing, first of all, but he got to be down there with the you know fifth and sixth graders kind of directing how you want your coaches at that level to, to, to put a program together. And obviously I'm sure you put the same kind of time in. Isn't that one of the real keys in having success? It, it's up there for sure. I mean, it, you, you, you're not going to do anything special without effort, right? But right. I think in addition to that, having a rapport with the kids more, more like that's foundational. So you're not working your way up the pyramid unless your foundation is solid. And and for me, being a teacher there helps a ton. Uh, I teach a couple of things that the kids tend to enjoy, like a sports history class, a history nice. of media, a psychology class. And I think it just allows me an opportunity to spend time with them. Um, I spent a few years in between my coaching stints. I coached girls basketball in the in the mid early two thousand aughts, and and when I stepped away from that just before my fourth child was born, uh, I I then kind of married psychology and sports together, and I got some sports psychology certification. And I I think it was just like I always um prioritize being a student of of sports and and the game and and i think what i learned as much as anything was just that you know you like anything else like any relationship it doesn't go anywhere unless you have a really good rapport and trust and and uh and so i work at that and that's that's what connects us to it and that's what makes it fun i've got a, a coaching staff with me that any one of them individually would be one of the best coaches in the area so I just I'm doing everything I can to surround these young men with with better minds and more engaged people and more interesting people. And and it, it seems to be working this year. Yeah, I would, I would say so. Ten and I'll start. That's not too bad. Uh, yeah. One of my sisters is a teacher at uh, elementary school in Lanesburg. And so my my niece and nephews, her kids, they'll be coming up through the ranks here in a few years, maybe maybe playing a little basketball for you. But I wanted to ask you brought up the the community and I've, I've heard through her and, you know, discussions with, with my family, how much they love Lanesburg. They, they moved there a few years ago, so they're fairly new to the area, but they've already noticed how great that community is. How, how big is that support for the success of your program? Yeah. I mean, it's, I, sometimes I feel like I don't want the secret to get out, <laughs> you know, um, because we, you know, we, we've got a really, unique thing going on here we're, we're still a, a reasonably small school uh hanging out in that division three area uh we've always been somewhat of a bedroom community to lansing and and haven't had too many school of choice 
kids. So most of our, our kids are kind of some on some level homegrown, I guess. And and I was too. I, I grew up in Langsburg and and I think that's one of my favorite things about it is is, is it's changed, but it hasn't changed too much. You know, yeah. it, it's it stayed the same. And my goodness, the the parents, the fans, the support is it's unique. In a day and age where I think most coaches are driven out of it because of the pressure of of the community or the the parents and the right. the fans, uh, it's one of my favorite things. I'm drawn to it. You know, don't get me wrong; it's not without its problems. Um, but I think, by and large, our I put our parents and our community up against anybody's and say it's it's if there was a measuring stick for it, I like us. I mean, yeah. it's it's a tremendous place to be. So you guys are, you know, 10 to 0. And, and in my opinion, I think once you get to the halfway point of the season and you're still unbeaten, I feel like the thoughts kind of start to creep in about what a, you know, 20 and 0 regular season would maybe mean to you guys. I mean, maybe psychologically, how do you keep your team, you know, kind of each game at a time? And is that something you guys have talked about? Is that a goal of your guys is to, to try to go this entire regular season unbeaten? Uh, no, no, we don't have any goals about winning anything, uh, in particular, it's, it's pretty important to me to, to just keep the kids grounded. I I think maybe just the opposite is true. I work quite a bit at make, helping them not focus on that sort of thing. Um, you know, we're, they, they understand we're not in control of, of wins any more than anything. You know, I mean, if we're, we're up against LeBron James kid and his team, you know, we may play our best basketball and lose and, you know, and certainly we might have played poor basketball and won this year at times, too. And and I think our measuring uh, the way that we measure ourselves is by ourselves. And we really yeah. try to work hard to focus on what we're doing, product that we're putting out. Are we getting the best of us? And uh, frankly, we haven't talked about our record once uh, we we. We have talked about I'll, I'll I'll plant seeds with them every day, very intentionally about my, my goals for them are bigger than, you know, just winning this, right. this next game or just right. this next league or whatever. Um, and without, you know, seeming too arrogant, I want them to understand that they have that capability. But we don't really talk about 22 and 0 or or league championships or those types of things too much. They do know that I've got a pair of scissors in my backpack and they don't, they don't get to look at those and until they've earned that. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's cool. cool. I'll tell you what, I, this is our first time to chat Daniel, but uh, mm-hmm. I can see the psychology wheels turning in that brain of yours. I'll tell you, and that definitely goes a long way in, in coaching and coaching success. Speaking of that, we'll wrap up with this. I think we'll probably catch up with you down the road, talk more specific basketball stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're a teacher over at Langsburg, like you mentioned. You also have a couple of interesting side businesses, don't you? Uh, well, I, I did. I'm kind of moving away from that oh, yeah. as I get a little bit older. I, I, I'm i M21. I used to own a strip mall, mall but I sold that. And and this uh, this can sell like mental training business I used to do, but I don't really mm-hmm. do too much with that anymore. Langsburg actually uh, hired me. When I was in between my varsity coaching stints, I was just doing some youth coaching for my own children. Right. And uh, they hired me to work with all the varsity teams. I did that for about three or four years. And and I love that, too. That was really mm-hmm. cool. Well, it seems all to be paying off. I mean, 10-0, and 0, go for the next game, you know, one at a time, as we always say in the coaching yeah. industry. But, uh, hey, we really appreciate the time here on Three Point Podcast and the Prep Spotlight. We'll be definitely following the, the Wolf Pack very closely the rest of the season. Yeah. Well, thanks. I appreciate it, guys. I had a blast. Thanks for having me on. All right, Daniel. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah.